Welcome back. We have just embarked upon the analysis of our um, time integration algorithms for uh, parabolic equations, right, so, uh, of, of first order uh, in time. Uh, what we've uh, accomplished along that uh, direction in the last uh, segment is a uh, recognition that there exists this uh, generalized eigenvalue problem that one can identify which provides for us a basis on which to carry out a modal analysis of the problem. Okay, so let's just uh, recall that aspect and uh, charge ahead. Okay, so we're engaged here in the analysis of our, of the time integration algorithms. Right, for uh, linear parabolic um, systems. Right, and you will recall that this is based upon the generalized eigenvalue problem. Right? And that generalized eigenvalue problem takes on the form K, which is our stiffness matrix, sorry, our uh, conductivity or diffusivity matrix, um, acting on a vector that is psi n, right? K psi n equals uh, lambda m, m, which is our mass matrix, psi n, okay? This is the basis for it, and um, we went ahead with this, right? What we found, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to go through the entire analysis, I'm just going to recall the critical parts of it, is that um, one can orthonormalize the, the, the eigenvectors psi uh, with respect to m, correct? So we found that psi L dot m psi m equals delta L n, the Kronecker delta, and uh, because of that, this result also lets us say that psi L dot k psi m equals um, lambda L. Okay, all right, uh, it actually properly equals lambda m multiplied with uh, delta ln, okay? That's what it actually is, okay? So it is zero unless m equals l, okay? The second equation, the right-hand side of the second equation. Okay, and if l equals m, it's equal to psi l, which is the same as psi n. All right, and you recall that in this, uh, lambda m is our eigenvalue, right, corresponding to the eigenvector psi m. Okay, so this is orthonormalization. Okay. All right. So, with this in hand, what we observed, uh, I think, at the very end of the segment is that uh, since these um, vectors psi, form and uh, actually span the space, uh, they serve as a basis, okay? So what we have is uh, an expansion in the psi m basis, right, where m equals 1 up to ndf. Okay, right? 
and this lets us say that a vector d, right, such as the vector of uh, global degrees of freedom that we are now working with can be expanded as uh, sum over m d sub m psi sub m, okay, right. And we saw that each of the dm's, the modal degrees of uh, the, the, the modal coefficients, right, each dm is given by, um, um, right, it's equal to psi m dotted with m d, all right. This is everything that we need to know, all right, and these are the modal coefficients. All right, what we are going to do now is uh, with the summary of our um, analysis of, sorry, uh, with, with the summary of our um, uh, modal decomposition of the problem, right? Right, so this, 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 this result is the modal decomposition. modal decomposition of D. All right. So, with this, uh, with these results, with the summary of results, we can go ahead, right? And um, what we are going to do now is uh, extend this idea of the modal decomposition to uh, the equations we are working with. All right. So, we are going to start here with a modal decomposition of the time exact ODE, right? Right, and remember everything, we are working with homogeneous equations, okay? So, which equation is that? Think about it. this one, m d dot plus k d equals not a forcing term on the right or well the forcing term is equal to 0. All right, we have this uh, with the initial condition that d at time 0 equals the d 0 vector. Okay, so now we are going to do a modal decomposition of this equation itself. The way that works is the following. We already know the modal decomposition of D, okay? Um, that modal decomposition, I'm going to write in slightly different notation. Well, the notation is not terribly different. I just want to move the M from being a subscript of the coefficient to a superscript, okay? So that's not a power, that's a superscript. Right, and you'll see just in a bit what I want to do with the subscript. I need room in there. Okay, um, this uh, times psi. Let me move this also to the to a superscript. Right, the m there is also a superscript. Now, uh, remember that um, this uh, d vector of ours is time dependent. Right, that's why we're able to take a time derivative. Well, we could always take a time derivative, but that's what makes sure that the time derivative isn't, uh, doesn't vanish, right? Okay, so d is a function of time. Okay, my question is uh, where on the right-hand side does that time dependence go? Does it go into the coefficients, right, the dm's or the psi m's, the eigenvectors? Right, they go in, the, the time dependence shows up in the dm's. Okay, and more than just a convenience that it has to be that way. Why is it that the psi m's don't change with time? It's because the psi m's are, are the, uh, 
eigenvectors of the generalized eigenvalue problem, but the matrices that define the generalized eigenvalue problem, the K and the M matrices, are fixed in time, okay, because we are doing a linear problem, okay. So let's just state that, that's useful to remember, okay. So this, what, what, what's behind this particular decomposition, right, where the time go, where the time dependence is held in the, in the coefficients, right, is the fact that um, the set of psi m right um, are fixed in time because our conductivity matrix k and uh, mass matrix M are also fixed in time. Okay, that's what allows us to do this. Okay, but you see what that also allows us to do. What that immediately lets us say is that uh, D dot, right? D dot is now sum over M, D dot M, function of time, psi M, right? Sum of course running from 1 to number of degrees of freedom, okay? And uh, we're going to make these, we're going to substitute both these decompositions into our uh, time exact ODE, right? So what this implies then is, uh, let me just say this here, substituting okay. It implies now that M multiplying the sum over little n, d dot m psi m plus k sum over m d m psi m equals 0, okay? What I'm going to do next is, um, is apply linearity, right? So what this then apply, what this implies is that because M and L are matrices and because we're dealing with linear algebra there, what we can write here is that sum over M D dot M mass matrix acting on psi M plus sum over M DM conductivity matrix acting on psi M equals zero. All right. Now I am going to uh, dot this entire equation on the left. Well, it doesn't matter with left or right. I'm going to dot it. Uh, because it's a vector equation finally. I'm going to dot it uh, with a specific eigenvector, let's say psi L, okay? So now I'm going to take psi L, okay? Um, dotted with the sum dm dot psi M plus psi L dotted with the sum over M dm k psi M equals 0, okay? 
note that something has changed between those two equations, right? Something very obvious has changed. The zero here is no longer a zero vector. It's the scalar zero, right? Because I'm, after all, taking a dot product of a vector equation here. This is a vector equation, and I'm taking a dot product of it with another vector of the same dimension, right? Psi r. Okay? But now we know how this all works out, right? Because we know exactly what happens with psi l. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm missing here. Sorry, I'm missing an m here. So let me just clean this up. I'm missing here. That matrix. Okay. All right. Now it's all right. Okay. Well, let's carry out these dot products, right? And and we know what we get from these. 